Hi everyone, welcome to today's lesson where we're going to be looking at Love by Evan Boland. So again, this is a revision video. You'll have done this in class and just a quick revision guide in order for you to carry out your assignments for essays or in, uh, coming up to the mocks or indeed the leave insert. Okay, so this is a longer poem than the ones we have previously studied. Um, as this title suggests, it's about love. Okay, I'm going to read through it. We're going to look at the poetic devices and just a bit, a bit of background on the poem. Okay, so. Dark falls on this Midwestern town where we once lived when myths collided. Now, the word myths is important here. Um, it's a reference to Greek mythology. Okay, and we'll come to that now in a minute. Okay, now Midwestern town, it's in Iowa, in America. Okay, so she's going back to a time when her and her husband Kevin lived in a Midwestern town in America called Iowa, where myths collided. Dusk has hidden the bridge in the river, which slides and deepens to become the water the hero crossed on his way to hell. This is a reference to the River Styx, and it's from the Aeneid. Okay, River Styx was the entrance into the underworld, and Aeneas. Um, was a normally you had to be dead in order to get into the underworld, but Aeneas, who had a golden branch, was allowed passage into the underworld. Um, so it's going to be referenced several times, and it's going to be explained how she feels like Aeneas. Aeneas went into the underworld, and he met some of his former comrades who wanted to speak to him, but their mouths opened, but nothing came out. Okay, and she's going to explain how that um can be used as a reference for marriage and the way love uh, can change over time. Not far from here is our old apartment. We had a kitchen and an Amish table. Now, the Amish table here signifies a simple life, okay? The Amish, known for the simplicity, um, without electricity, without the trappings of modern life. Okay, so the, the Amish is important there. We had a view. And we discovered there love had the feather and muscle of wings and had come to live with us. A brother of fire and air. Okay. Love had the feather and muscle of wing. The personification. The love was so strong between them. That it was personified. It was like a physical presence that had came to live with them. It lived with us. A brother of fire and air. It was like a natural element. It was like every... The, the love within the house was so strong. It, it was as if it was there in person. Okay. We had two infant children one of whom was touched by death in this town and spared. So, but a, a narrative there about a story that their two children um, were infants, one of whom was touched by death in this town and spared. Now, this is important. So if you think about life for them at that point when um, they're newly married, they have young children, they're living life very much on the edge. Um, the only thing they'll be hoping for is their child to get better. It's a very, not, I wouldn't say exciting time, but it's, it's a full of um, emotion as, as they long for their child to get better. Okay, so it's just when we come to the next part, it'll probably make more sense. So they lived in, at this moment in time, they're very much in love, but there's a lot of bad things happening as well. But there's a lot of emotion within their relationship. Back to the, the Greek uh, mythological story here. And when the hero was healed by his comrades in hell, their mouths opened and their voices failed. And there's no knowing what they would have asked about a life they had shared and lost. Okay, so he wanted to talk to them. So he wanted to talk, or they wanted to talk to him, but couldn't. Okay, so his former comrades are there. Um, and you can imagine how hard that is. They can see and their mouth is opened, but their voices failed. Okay, just moving to the next page here. Okay, I am your wife, it was years ago. Very matter of fact there, I am your wife, it was years ago, as if time has passed, okay? So like all couples, time has now passed between them. Our child was healed, so importantly, the child was healed. We love each other still. Now, this is important because she's highlighting the fact that they do love each other. We love each other still. Across our day-to-day -day and ordinary distances, we speak plainly. We hear each other clearly. So... Their child is healed and their love, the love is no longer as strong. So the emotion will not be as strong. Now, and I would often say this to the class, if they had been offered anything at that moment in time, 
when their child was sick to live a bland, uh, ordinary, boring life, they would have taken it. But when you have the bland, ordinary, boring life, sometimes we long for that, uh, that living on the edge, that not knowing what's going to happen. The emotion is missing. Okay, so they speak plainly. She's she acknowledging the love is still there, but the love is different. Okay, it's very different to the love that they had uh, back in Iowa. Yet I want to return to you. Okay, she's still with him. But she wants to return to another version of him. She wants to return to the young version of him. On the bridge of the Iowa River as you were. With snow on the shoulders of your coat. And a car passing with its headlights on. Look, think of the imagery here. It's like something from a film. He's like a hero. She has already um, compared him to a hero uh, in the Aeneid. So it's like a, he's like a film star here. That The imagery with the snow on his shoulders. And the car passing with his headlights on. She wants to go back to that version of him. I see you as a hero in a text. The image blazing in the edges gilding. And I long to cry out the epic question. My dear companion. Will we ever live so intensely again? Okay. That's the question. Well, and, the, and the answer there is no. Okay. They definitely won't live that intense again. Why? Things are very different. Um. They're older, um, that uh, the, the, the death, the, the possible death of their child um, is no longer there. Um, they're together a long time. The, the conversations they have, even though they still love each other, she finds it boring. She wants the intensity and the emotion back. But she's asking a question, but she knows the answer. Will love come to us again and be so formidable at rest to offer us ascension even to look at him? She's saying back then... The, the personification of love as a bird. It, it raised them up. Okay. Now here's where she now compares. Um, Aeneas and the underworld. Passed through the river Styx. When he opened his mouth. Or when the, the comrades opened the mouth. They couldn't speak. Here it is them. But the words are shadows. And you cannot hear me. Okay so she's wrapped that up. She's uh, brought that full circle. So she's comparing uh, as a couple, a married couple, uh, the same as Aeneas. There are things they want to say, but they don't. There are things she keeps to herself that she can't speak with this intensity. You walk away and I cannot follow. Now, when you say this line, you walk away and I cannot follow, it looks like they're drifting, okay? But it's important to acknowledge that up here, back up here, we love each other still. So what Boland is really saying about love is that love has changed, okay? Love has changed. It's no longer this mad, intense rush, okay? It has, it has become more monotonous, more calm, in many ways probably boring to her. But she still loves him. She does long. You walk away and I cannot follow. Is there a sense that the, uh, what she's really doing here is she's picturing a young Kevin or a young husband and that's who she wants. And this, why does he walk away? Because he's a mirage. He, he's not real. And he, she cannot follow. Okay, so she's just using Greek mythology to maybe explain the passage of time and the effects it has on love. That One of the most important lines in that poem is the, is the personification of love. Okay, the Amish table, the simple times. They probably have a lot more money now, but they no longer live so intensely. And the other one is... Will we ever live so intensely again? Okay. So if you're answering a question on that, think of the poetic devices. Think of the, the, the message that she's sending. Okay. Um, very often with Boland, you may be asked about, um, she, she offers or she gives uh, poetry with a private and a public side to it. So this isn't just about Boland and her husband. This is probably a, a reference for most husbands and wives and, and what they go through through the passage of time. Again, anyone with any questions, feel free to email or access the website at endersenglishnotes.com. Thank you.